Hey everyone, how's it going? Mark here. Uh, today we're just going to be taking it pretty simple. We're going to be building an all AMD computer, the system that almost killed AMD. So let's get a move on. Alright everyone, so we're just going to kind of go through the parts as we go through this build. Uh, first thing I've got here is the old FX8320E, uh, so let's get this installed first. And just so everyone can see right here, this is the CPU. And we're lining up the triangles right there. And just drops right in. Now with that installed, we're just going to go ahead and apply some thermal paste. Got some good old MX4 here. Uh, that kind of turned into a mess, so whatever. <laughs> All right, and the next thing we've got here is our cooler, the Saifuma 2. So let's get this installed. This should handle the temperatures of this thing nicely. This is a really hot CPU. And I'm pretty sure I don't need to remove the fans for this. Next, we've got 16 gigs of 2133 megahertz DDR3. So let's get this popped in. And you always want to try to, if it has dual channel as an option, which this does, you always want to try to run it in the correct slots. This motherboard's actually color coded. Uh, some they're going to be side by side. Most are going to be opposites like this. Now with that being said, our motherboard's pretty much assembled there. So let's go and move on to the case next. Now on the case here, of course, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is take off our side panels. So let's get these out the way. And with that, let's go ahead and get these fans in first, okay? That way, uh, when we go to put the motherboard in or anything else, I'm not slicing my hands on the cooler that's in the way. almost forgot to go over that um these are just some f12 arctic fans they're not too bad uh they're pretty good value they're not the best fans out there but the aesthetic works really well for this build they put out a decent amount of airflow and yeah can't really complain they're not super noisy either To drop our motherboard in but let's not forget the back plate here so i'm just gonna pop that in and i've gone ahead and added one of the cable extensions i have already onto the motherboard i do plan to use them in this setup so now is a good time since it's going to be near impossible to get to these later completely forgot to go over our motherboard as well. It's the uh, Gigabyte GA970A UD3. I'm sure you've noticed from already looking at it right here. Uh, it's, I want to say it's the second revision, so it's a pretty solid board overall. Nothing fancy it whatsoever, but I actually kind of like this old blue aesthetic. 
uh, matches my RAM, so it pulls together all right. And it has a pretty decent VRM, which is a requirement if you wanna mess with the eight core chips. Most of the 970 boards definitely didn't. Most of the boards out there are budget boards and most of them cannot handle the eight core chips in my experience. Now I've gone ahead and already turned the case around, so let's get a graphics card installed. For the graphics card here, we're just gonna be using an R9 Fury by Sapphire. This should be the perfect pairing for our FX CPU as these things both almost caused AMD to go bankrupt. Okay, let's get some of these cables cleaned up now. Time to put the SSD on the bracket. Uh, just really simple here, it lines up with the holes. to put all the panels back on and get an operating system installed. Uh, have built this computer. The cable management is a little messy. I wish I could do it a little better, but I'm just using cable extensions. So A, those take up a lot of space uh, and B, I'm pretty much out of zip ties. So this is what we get today. All right. It's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing fires up. Awesome. First try. All right, so I've gone ahead. I've got Windows installed, set up. I got a few games loaded on here. Gonna see if that works. And I figured I'd show a benchmark real quick just to see if everything works out all right. Turns out I already had some old overclock settings on here. So let's see if it works. Well, as you can see right here, after running Cinebench just to get an idea for performance benchmark, it's not holding up so great, especially not for the amount of energy this pulls and heat it puts out. Uh, let's see if it can game though. So it runs Rocket League just fine here. Uh, 1440p, all high settings, getting about 170 FPS on average. Got a game of Immortals Phoenix Rising pulled up now. Uh, everything seems to run pretty solid overall. 1440p medium settings, all default. And I'm getting about 40 to 45 FPS on average. Not amazing, but not a game you need a super high pace. And as new as this is and as much as going on, 
You can always play with the quality settings. I'm impressed that it actually runs it this well. Kills for Rise fired up here. Um, not a whole lot to say. Everything looks good. Runs fine. Getting 60 to 70 FPS around town. And it's a pretty visually demanding game. So, probably gonna call that. So I guess everybody's kind of wondering why I refer to this as the PC that almost killed AMD. And it really has to do with when these CPUs were released, it was kind of a step backwards in a lot of ways for them and massive power consumption and heat output as well. At the time, Intel was just clawing so far ahead. And so AMD kind of almost went bankrupt to my understanding through all of that. I feel like the when the R9 Fury came, that was when it was just too little too late and the Radeon graphics card brand really needed that flagship. To my understanding, they couldn't even meet the demand once it was also released. So I tried something a little different here. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit that like button and give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notifications when I release new content. Otherwise, leave me a comment with some ideas for some future ventures. And until next time.